Well, hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the new motion matching example project. I've just been asked a little bit, what are my thoughts on motion matching? You know, I just kind of wanted to go over the, the project itself and just kind of give my thoughts on like how feasible it is. So I've booted up the project. Um, I haven't changed any of the actual animation settings. I have disabled Nanite and Lumen, because as you guys know, they just chug. They're just big chuggerinos. And as you can see, it looks absolutely fantastic. And despite any kind of criticisms or like negativity that might occur in this video, the end result is extremely fluid. You know, there's very minimal foot sliding. All of it is capsule based movement. So it isn't root motion movement. You can see if I go show collision, you can see there are capsule. It's just moving like a normal capsule does. That's fantastic because it means that it's super responsive. It means we can add, you know, physical forces to it and all that kind of stuff. Basically, it looks really good. You know, when we're turning around and like doing these kind of arcs and stuff, there's just like it just looks incredible. All of the sort of contextual, you know, jumping and stuff is really solid. So with my sort of, you know, initial impressions on like the, the end result, I sort of wanted to, uh, I've got a few like little gripes, honestly. So this was sort of marketed as you get 500 like free animations. It's like, you know, this huge library of, of animations that you get access to in this example project. And while that isn't necessarily untrue, the animations are like such classics as M neutral jump B land stand heavy R foot. We've got a uh, M neutral jump F off walk L foot. We also have M neutral jump F land run heavy L foot. Uh, and you can see the the list just goes on and on and on. And this is sort of the case for like a lot of these animations. They're all extremely specific and they're kind of only usable in, you know, in motion matching. The way that motion matching works, this is like my very uh, sort of layman's understanding of it. You essentially predict the trajectory of the character by using, you know, their current rotation and acceleration and velocity and all that kind of stuff. And you predict ahead. And then basically for each animation, they have a very particular curve assigned to them. So, you know, for example, this one here, it is moving left while facing forward. It slows down and continues facing forward, but then starts moving backwards. And that's sort of the, the curve that is assigned to this animation. And so as we're moving around, the system is like constantly evaluating, okay, where do I go from here? And given my current pose, where is the most similar part of this that I can like blend into and blah, 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 blah. So it's kind of like a, like a, like a six dimensional blend space in that regard. Obviously with this much data, holy fucking shit. With this much data, you know, it's going to look good regardless of like, you know, like I'm, I'm going forward, but then I turn this way, but like face backwards. So like if I do this and I do this, then like it just works because there's like every single possible transition, you know, go this way, turn this way, but go backwards. It's just like overall really solid and looks amazing. But the the 500 advertised animations, it's not like we're getting, you know, a bunch of different run animations, a bunch of different walking animations and some like jump and, you know, mid air loops and all that kind of stuff. It's very much for this specific implementation and this specific style. Now, I don't actually know how a system like this goes about adding different kind of styles of character. So for example, if we wanted a, like a feminine character gate, do we have to, you know, go to our animation software and like tweak every single one of these animations 
to, you know, if we wanted to do something simple like just bring the elbows in and just kind of like make the, the hands kind of tilt outwards a bit. Do we have to do that for every single animation? I mean, we could use an additive on top of it, but then we're just adjusting the pose, not the actual motion. So if we wanted the arms to be a little bit more snappier, it's like we just have so much data to kind of fuck with. Let's talk about performance. So I feel like this kind of system is probably best used for something like Alan Wake or Hellblade, maybe like God of War, where you've got like, you know, a few characters on screen because it is a little bit of a, of a chug fest. Obviously at the moment, you know, with Nanite and Lumen disabled, I'm getting 120 FPS. If we were to grab 50 characters, these are all using the motion matching. Um, as you can probably tell, you know, they all look fantastic. Uh, I'm just inputting uh, like a random velocity over time into these guys. So they're not actually parving. They're just, you know, adding input straight into them. You can see we're kind of chugging. We're at like 23 FPS. It's, you know, it's not pretty. If we go to stat unit, um, you can see that, yes, all this is coming from the game thread, which is where animation is running. Um, I believe at the moment, motion matching isn't multi-threaded, which may help in the future, possibly. So with these 50 characters, if we change them to use a, just a much simpler, and in BP, you know, using our traditional sort of just blend space, blend space based animation blueprint. So now with all of the characters, just using regular blend space, you can see they're a little bit shitty because uh, I've literally just made it as simple as possible. But we're getting a nice, you know, 40, 45 FPS, um, which again, doesn't sound like much, but it is double what we had earlier and you know this is with no animation budgeting or anything like that now keep in mind you could at a distance swap out a motion matched character for just a regular like traditional blend spaced character that's definitely something you could and probably should do on average i'd say this is maybe like 50 to 70 percent more expensive than just like traditional animation now whether you believe that is best for your project that's completely up to you the two times cost makes it look three times better than it's like it's a it's a net positive you know if you're making a game like uh you know like a diablo clone or something like that and they're gonna be on screen for a second then you're probably better off just using a regular blend spaced, blend spaced did it and in BP. Or I mean, at that point, you'd probably be looking into like animation instancing and that kind of stuff. Just small animation samples for NPCs so that algorithm doesn't take as long to pass through the best choice. From what I saw, they use different databases to reduce fidelity at a distance, but it's undeniably less performant than a layered native thread safe setup. So maybe in the future, this will be able to be parallelized. But at the moment, it's, you know, it kind of chugs a bit. But that isn't to say that it isn't extremely impressive. Uh, I just wouldn't recommend using it at scale like this. All right, now the last little thing I wanted to talk about is just like the, the complexity of the setup and all of the animation authoring that potentially is required. So if we go to our, you can see we just have all of these data tables of like the animations and their curves and their blah 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 you know if we go to like uh the the dense pose search we have the stand idols list of things that have their own things movement modes stance movement state gate and then if we actually go into them wherever they are databases dense uh lands heavy we've got like all these these actually show the uh the trajectories that you know they would be used for uh the schema is like jump which like just has all this stuff and it's just like bruh <laughs> <coughs> Ugh, it's just, it's, yeah, 
it's a lot. So you look at the one that I set up and it's just, here's, here it is, I want to DIY. Um, it's just this blend space, you know, walk forward and run and jog and whatever. It's, this is like the simplest one I could make in this session with the animations. And then the animation blueprint is just uh, blend space <laughs> into the output pose. <laughs> And so, you know, it's like this versus the other thing. I know that I can't be bothered and I feel like a lot of other people probably won't bother. I can see this becoming the, the next ALS V4. I don't, I don't want to come across as a douchebag in the video. Basically, if you take a lot of inspiration from classics like Only Up and Alt F4 and, you know, those kind of games, this is the perfect starter template for you. So I can see in, you know, the near future, in the next few months, we're going to get a few games that have really good looking locomotion and not much else. But I can't imagine anyone, at least like a solo indie developer, authoring all these animations for potentially just one character or one character type or one locomotion style unless they just took all of these animations and used that as like a, a basis so overall i do think the end result looks fantastic the best locomotion in a video game to date uh, in terms of like you know the seamlessness and all that kind of stuff i'll be keeping an eye out to see how it goes with like layering different poses you know different weapons different character types, different character types with different weapons, whether it has to all be completely additive or there's some kind of smart way to adjust, you know, the timings and all that kind of stuff. The TLDR or the TLDW is everything comes with a price. The better you want your game to look, the more it's going to cost to run. And that goes for animation, that goes for graphics, that goes for, you know, gameplay depth, it goes for basically everything. Everything has a trade-off and it's up to you and the specifics of your project to determine whether those trade-offs suit what you're going for. So I can imagine a lot of AAA studios opting for this approach because they have the resources to, you know, go in deep. But that is my little surface skim of the the motion matching example project i do love it but probably not for me and there definitely are some animations in this big library that are usable outside of the motion matching context but it's definitely not you know the, the 500 that was advertised so it's a bit cheeky but, uh, you know, that's that's Epic Games for you. With that, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you've uh, you've liked and subscribed and hit the, you know, the fucking ding. And the, yeah. <laughs> but if you do want to support monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 per month through the Patreon, which is linked below. If you do need any help with Unreal Engine related things, you can join our Discord server. which is also in the, And with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.